Hey guys, welcome to my channel. My name is Maureen and I'm a homeschooling mom to two boys. Today I want to do just a quick overview of the history curriculum that we'll be using for the upcoming school year from The Good and the Beautiful. So if you go to their website, they are super generous with the amount of sample pages that you are able to view online to get a really good look at their curriculum, which honestly was a big selling factor for me. Um, but because of that, I'm not going to read over a lot of the description about it. You can do that on your own. This video is really just going to be my take on um, the history and the things that I love that I'm excited about for our school year. So let's go ahead and get a quick overlook of history year one from the good and the beautiful. So we're entering our fifth year, not 10, fifth, <laughs> our fifth year of homeschooling, which really just blows my mind. Um, both of my boys are entering, I'm sorry, I have two boys. One is entering sixth grade, one is entering seventh grade, and obviously they'll both be in middle school for this coming year. Now the first um, almost four years of our homeschool, uh, I would consider that we were a little bit more what you would call eclectic style of homeschooling, meaning that um, we did a separate uh, or we used a different um, company for every subject that we did. I really enjoyed that. Um, the downfall to that for me was that it took so much of my time in planning and preparing for the upcoming week that every Sunday I was spending at least an hour minimum, if not two or more hours usually, um, just getting ready for the upcoming week, not month, week. So um, I just really wanted something different in my search for lo looking for a box curriculum, something that really just kind of laid out a plan, an overall plan for me. Um, I came across a video on YouTube about the good and the beautiful. So let me just interject real quick um, on that note. You know, anytime that I'm looking for maybe a homeschool uh, curriculum review or I'm interested in a hobby or even just like hair and makeup tutorial, I'm always looking at YouTube for tutorials, reviews, tips and ideas. And so with this video and any of my other videos on my channel, I just want you to take any tip or um, idea that you can utilize for yourself. I certainly don't expect you to do homeschooling exactly like me, and I don't expect myself to do homeschooling exactly like you. But I can almost always take at least one great idea or advice from a tutorial um, or any video on YouTube and utilize it for myself. So that's my hope with my videos. Um, on my channel is that it would in some way, shape, or form be able to help you. Actually, one thing that was mentioned was that the language arts um, levels one through five were available for free. And I'm gonna be honest, my first thought was free? Usually that means like you get what you pay for, so I wasn't super interested. Um, but as she continued to talk, I thought, let me just go check out the website. Okay, I couldn't have been more wrong. I was blown away by the content. You guys, when they named it The Good and the Beautiful, spot on. It is exactly that, the good and the beautiful. So again, because they offer so many um, sample pages on their website for you to view their curriculum, I was able to get a really good idea of what a day might look like for us um, should we choose their curriculum? Well, obviously I went ahead and went with the good and the beautiful because I was just blown away by the history, by the language arts. I'd even ordered the handwriting and typing. Um, so the majority of what we're going to use next year is from the good and the beautiful. So let's just take a look at history year one. So there are four different years offered in the history courses. We're obviously starting with year one, um, but every year is going to take you from um, ancient to modern times. Is that right? Left, like your left, right, yeah, <laughs> okay. Every year is gonna take you from ancient to modern times. 
Um, but the cool thing is that every year, although you're covering all of the time periods, you're going to look at different events that happened within the time periods. So what we studied this year is going to be different than the following three years to come. Now, last year we completed the Mystery of History Volume 1. Um, so when we start History Year 1 from the Good and the Beautiful, we're actually going to start in Unit 2 because on our timeline, that's where we left off finishing the Mystery of History. So I ordered the physical set. Listen, I have a fantastic printer at home, but I just did not want to print all of the pages. I just didn't call it lazy. I, I don't know. I, I wouldn't call it lazy. It, well, maybe it is. I don't know. Whatever. I didn't want to print it all. Um, and the other thing was, if you go online and sample their curriculum, you will see the beautiful artwork and illustrations that have gone into this curriculum. Again, I have a great printer, but I really wanted to um, be able to have those illustrations printed as beautifully and as professionally as I possibly could get them. So I went ahead and went with the physical set for our history uh, year one. Now, two things that I got to see once I actually got the curriculum in my hands that I didn't remember being able to look at online um, were number one, the memorization pages. We already do memory work every day in our homeschool, um, and I will do a video in the future on our memory cards and how we use them. But when I saw the options for um, the passages for the, for the kids to memorize for history, I was really excited because none of them are um, quotes or passages that we have already memorized. So I'm really excited about that. And it, um, the curriculum suggests that each child chooses two options of memorization for the history. Um, so more than likely, I'll probably let my kids choose one of the shorter ones and one of the longer passages. Okay, the other thing that I was excited to see was the read aloud suggestion page. Um, I went ahead and looked at our unit two read aloud suggestions. We're probably going to pick several, but I think we're going to start with the door in the wall. I actually already have that physical book because I was planning on us reading it together. We just haven't gotten to it yet. Um, but honestly, I think I'm going to probably do the audiobook version. I haven't, we haven't actually started The Good and the Beautiful yet for our upcoming school year, and so I'm not quite sure how much talking I'm going to be required to do. Um, so I might play that one by ear, and if I feel like my voice needs a little break, I'll probably go with the audiobook. We love audiobooks anyways, so i I'm, I'm probably already made that decision. <laughs> Another thing that I love... Um, about the course book that I really got a chance to see in person again once it was in my hands was the different activities that they have throughout all of the lessons. So each lesson for the most part follows a, a, a pattern, um, if you will, as far as you know, read to the children, you may play the history game, you may use um, the big book of history stories. You may listen to the dramatized um, audio recordings. Um, it, it, it's going to change up, but um, the activities are different. And um, for example, there there's a few lessons that have what they call a room to room activity. But for those activities, it will prompt me before the lesson begins that I need to prepare for that activity. I will take the sheets um, following the lesson and tape them to different doorways in our home. And the kids have to go find um, those specific pages and put them in order by date, read what's on the page, see the illustration, and it really just brings to life some of the things that we learned in that lesson. That's just an activity that I probably wouldn't have thought of on my own. And it's little things like that that I'm really excited about that they put so much thought into creating for this history curriculum. The big book of history stories is fantastic. It's not something that you're going to use for every lesson, but when you use it, the stories are wonderful. What I, another thing that I really like about that book is that there's different illustrators used for the entire book. So the look and feel of each story is different. Um, the illustrations are different. There's different mediums used. There's, you know, it, it just, I love that, um, that they, they each have their own uniqueness to it. Okay, so I purchased the physical set, and even with the physical set, you will still need to print 
um, your own copies of the Student Explorers. Um, the Good and the Beautiful has four different um, grade options for that that you will receive when you order the curriculum. So again, I have a boy going into the sixth grade and a boy going into the seventh grade. Um, those actually fall into two different PDFs and I was kind of on the fence of if I wanted them to use the same printout. Um, but you know, I really want to encourage um, separation for them as they're getting older. We've done so much that they've used the same worksheets over the years and everything's always the same for them because we try to do um, a lot of things together because they are so close in age. And so I went ahead and printed out the grades four through six option for my sixth grader and then the grades um, seven through nine for my seventh grader. So they will have different activity sheets. And actually some of the lessons call for seventh grade and up to use um, student explorer sheets and the lower grades will not. So there will be times where my older student will have an activity sheet and my younger student will not. All four grade levels that come with that PDF are separated from um, grades one through three, grades four through six, grades seven through nine, and then grades 10 through 12. So that's another um, side note is that this history curriculum from the Good and the Beautiful is for kindergarten to 12th grade, which is fantastic. Because my boys are older, um, we probably will not end up cycling back to um, history year one but I'm probably going to hold on to it because we often reference um, curriculums that we've used in the past that we're not using, but we'll just reference it um, when we remember, oh, we've studied that before. Let's go look at the illustration or let's go look at that fact. We can't remember what that fact was that we talked about and we'll reference it. So I, ha I hold on to things even after we've completed them. Okay, and then the Keys of History board game, I am super excited about. We use games a lot in our homeschool for learning. Um, we actually already have a history game. We use historical conquest for fun. My kids are really into Pokemon. They have been for years. And when they saw historical conquest, they kind of went nutso over it. So um, I was really excited to see that um, this curriculum offered a game specifically for the curriculum. There's three ways to play it. We'll probably start with the cooperative way and then go into the competitive style, but they also offer a single player option. So there's several cards with beautiful illustrations on the front. Each card contains a different amount of points and the title to that illustration. And then you turn it over and the back has three facts about that card. And those facts are what you use to gain your points playing the board game. Okay, so that's my quick overview, maybe not so quick, on the Good and the Beautiful History Year One. I hope that you enjoyed it and maybe got some type of tip or idea from this video that will be helpful to you. If you did, please give me a thumbs up, leave a comment, I'd be so happy to hear from you, and I will see you soon. Have we cho chosen? Basically what that is, is the today I want to just blah, blah, blah.